Welcome to Unreal Gems. In this video, we are going to take a look at a key animation concept in Unreal Engine's animation system, the animation blueprint. So let's go. Okay, so the next type of asset that we need to take a look at are animation blueprints. This is going to be the key asset for gameplay. So this is where we will make a final decision on the output pose of our character of the skeletal mesh. We are going to do that using state machines to make decisions based on variables we read using blueprint scripting from the character or wherever and that will lead as i mentioned before to a final pose in our character depending on gameplay elements okay so the animation blueprints are specialized blueprints that will control the final animation of a skeletal mesh we have two types of graphs inside them First, we have the event graph, which is where we read data from the character and store it in variables. And then we have the anim graph, which is where we use those variables and make a final decision on the output pose that the skeletal mesh is going to have. So creating an animation blueprint is quite simple. You just need to right click on the content browser, go to animation and select animation blueprint. And that's pretty much it. You select the corresponding skeleton, which is the skeleton of your character. And once you choose it, you can go ahead and click create and it will create it for you. You can now give it a name. In my case, I always use ABP underscore and then the name of the animation blueprint, whatever, in this case test, because it's going to be a small test. Double click it. To open it up and once you have it opened you can go ahead and see the anim graph double clicking on it you are going to see that it is empty because right now we haven't done anything at all if you don't see it remember to double click and you can do the same for the event graph the event graph is also empty for now so again we haven't done anything so it is normal to apply an animation blueprint to a skeletal mesh you can select it and then in the animation mode you can select use animation blueprint no animation asset no custom mode use animation blueprint and then you can choose the anim class which is the animation blueprint in our case remember that it was called avp test so i'm going to click on it and once i do the skeletal mesh will use the animation blueprint okay so next up we have the event graph which is going to have special events related to animation like for example initialize animation or update animation these events are going to fire whenever something happens related to to their names like for example here when we update uh, a frame an animation frame this is going to fire and it's going to execute things to the right and this is going to allow us to update the variables that we have created in the anim blueprint with uh, the values that come from the character or wherever we want to read them and then those variables are going to be used by other nodes like for example blend spaces to make decisions and change animations based on them and select a final output pose for our skeletal mesh so remember that the event graph is going to control uh, variables and logic that we are going to store in those variables like for example if you need to calculate the velocity of the character from a vector you are going to do this in the event graph not in the anim graph and then we are going to pass that logic pass those computations stored on those variables that we mentioned before to the anim graph which is then going to make a final decision on the skeletal meshes output pose okay so here it is the event graph of one of the animation blueprints that i'm using with citrine here you have the overview and now let's dive into each component and see what it does okay so first things first 
the event initialize animation is going to fire up when the anim blueprint starts and here we are going to first get the character next we are going to cast it only once to save it in a variable that is called character that is key because we cannot be casting every frame so we need to cast it once save it and then just get the reference from the variable that we are seeing right there in references next we also store the character movement which is going to help with the same thing not having to cast every time next we have the event update animation which is going to pretty much fire for each animation frame and here is where all of the logic and all of the computations are going to be done so here the first thing that we need to do is check if that character reference is valid that's what that validated get does if you don't know how to obtain that get you can just use a normal one and then right click on the pin and convert to validated get this does the same thing as using an is valid after the get but this way you save a space next we have uh, the sequence that is going to execute on the pin order so first we are going to have the zero then the one two and so on and so forth so here we are going to follow the same order you can see that i'm using the velocity variable to store the velocity vector you can see it in the essential movement data there the velocity vector and then it is used with the vector length xy to obtain the other variable that we have there ground the speed which is going to be the speed of the character next we are using again ground the speed and the current acceleration in the movement component to calculate if the character is moving or not and then storing it in the should move boolean variable which again can be used elsewhere and last but not least we have again the movement component which has an is falling function that indicates if the character is falling or not so if it is jumping or in there or not and then we store it in the is falling boolean variable you can see both of the booleans in the essential movement data with this you have all of the data that you need to perform basic locomotion and since we don't want the video to run too long let's leave it here okay so next up we have the animation graph which is going to be what evaluates which final pose the skeletal mesh is going to have by default the animation blueprint is going to have a anim graph and an event graph so this anim graph can be used in tandem with animation sequences state machines animation montage blending like for example blend the spaces so on and so forth and with that we are going to be able to control that final pose that the skeletal mesh is going to have for each frame okay so here we have an animation graph that i am using with citrine remember that you can double click on the left panel to open up the event graph or the anim graph if you don't have them already open and then we have the locomotion so we have a state machine with the locomotion of the character so it goes from idle to walk and run which is going to be a blend space which blends between walking and running so once we have that we have some advanced stuff like dynamics that are physically simulated using the anim dynamics nodes which are going to manipulate bones in a physical manner and then the result is stored in a catched pose which is the locomotion catched pose those are like variables but for the anim graph so they store an intermediate pose that you can then use all over the anim graph in fact we are using that catched pose inside the main state machine which switches between locomotion or jumping you can see it in the locomotion state which has that catched pose which is kind of like a get of the catched pose next we have the montage slot which will allow us to override the pose that the anim graph outputs from the main state machine and last but not least we have the output pose which is going to be the final skeletal mesh pose 
that is the output of the anim graph. And with this, you can see a small example that uses the anim graph in a really basic manner. Next up, we have the anim preview editor, which allows us to manipulate the variables that we have in our anim graph. That makes debugging way easier than if we had to execute the game in editor and test there every single setting. Here, we can change variables on the fly and see how the preview looks. Okay, so the last thing that I wanted to make really clear is that variables are used to control the changes, for example, in the state machines or in any node of the anim graph, and that they are also used to communicate with actors. So you can use the character variable, the character reference, to obtain information about the character, or even you can trigger functions in the character to make changes to the character using that character reference that we saw earlier and that we have right here. So as you can see, variables are really, really, really important in the animation blueprint. Okay, so just to drive home the point, you can see here the variables with the references to the character and the movement component and the essential movement data like velocity, ground speed, if it's falling, etc, etc, etc. Creating variables is as simple as in any other blueprint. Just go to the variables panel, press plus, name the variable, change its type to whatever you want, and you are done. Let's delete it now. Remember that we fill those variables using the event graph, which is in charge of reading stuff from the character and then calculating things. Next, we have those variables inside the anim graph, like the amount of dynamics that we want in our earrings in terms of the locomotion, the ground speed for the blend space, which is going to switch between walking, running and idle. So here you can see an example Right now we are running, but if we set it to zero, you are going to see the green cross go to the left and the character stop. If we set it to 250, the green arrow will go to the middle and it will walk. And if we set it to 600, it will run. This usually is done in the character blueprint and we just read instead of changing it manually here, but it is essentially the same concept. This is a clear example of how can we use variables to communicate between the character and the anim blueprint. Now let's go and do the opposite thing. From the anim blueprint, we are going to fire a function on the character that is going to change the location. So in this example, we could move the character when a montage has ended or a notify fires up. So as you can see, you can do lots of things from the animation blueprint. And now I hope that you have a better overview of how you can use it and what are the tools at your disposal. Well, so that's it for this video. I hope that now you are clear on what an animation blueprint does in Unreal Engine. In the next videos, we are going to take a look at the rest of the animation blueprint, namely state machines. Remember, if this video has been helpful to you, go ahead, like and subscribe and we'll see each other in the next videos. Huge shout out and thanks to all my Patreons. As you know, making these videos takes a ton of time and effort because I research in depth all of the topics that I cover. So if you want me to keep making awesome stuff, consider supporting me on Patreon.